if I came here yesterday. Can you tell? Nope. <laughs> It is Saturday, November, I think it's November 6th here in 2021. Beautiful, beautiful morning. It's a little chilly here in November in Arizona. So Fahrenheit, we're about 55 degrees or so in the morning. And today I think we're gonna hit 86 or so in the afternoon um, for our live stream with you guys today. We're gonna try to get set up outside if we can swing it, but uh, hopefully we see you guys there or saw you last night. I uh, wanted to cover a couple of things today, talk to you a little bit about the importance of predators on the farm. You guys know we've been dealing with javelina getting into the vineyard garden area here, and they continue to come in every night. It varies. We see them on the cameras anywhere from 10 o'clock at night to midnight, one o'clock in the morning. So right in the middle of the night when you know it's hard to scare them off. We've had a lot of suggestions from you guys as far as what to do with them. I think we've kind of settled on the reality of electric fencing, which is fine because we knew we were gonna to have to incorporate that as we add additional livestock here on the farm in the ways that we want to raise them, much like we do with our chickens. So it will be good experience for us to get started on some electric fencing. So our thought is we'll probably do the entire vineyard garden and we'll share that with you guys kind of as we go. But one of the things that we've had them continue to do is come through and eat the leaves off the grapevines here. And they're pretty much chewing up to about what their normal height would be. So about two and a half to three feet. And of course we have the, all of our cordons and that kind of thing that'll be up at that three foot level, which will be a problem as we roll into spring when they're budding. Right now it doesn't matter too much, but the problem that we had the other day, and I noticed this about a week ago, is they are starting to dig in the wood chips down here on the ground. They're really only digging at this one grapevine consistently, and I think it's because I tried to plant some garlic in here. <laughs> now they're not eating some of the other garlic that I've got planted around the farm, but uh, it basically, they were digging in here, especially after it watered. What we did is just put some hardware cloth across the areas around the grapevine. And so far it's keeping them from being able to dig again. I'm not too concerned when they dig through the wood chips, but this time they got down to the roots. Now they didn't eat the roots. Um, they dug up a little bit, so, but they're not eating them. And you know, being a hunter and having hunted these guys before, I know that they will literally eat roots completely when they find something that they like. So clearly they're not a big fan of the roots. 
And I had a feeling that would be the case because they're also not eating any of the vines. They're really just going for the green. Now, one other thing that I'm noticing on the cameras, but we have a lot of coyotes that call the farm home permanently now. And we see them wandering around this area as well. And we don't see the two of them together. So we'll see Javelina come through and we'll see coyotes come through, but they don't come through at the same time. So now a coyote's gonna not take down a full size Javelina, but a baby it will. So that I wouldn't mind seeing um, if they can get past mama. But uh, they do kind of tend to not be here at the same time. And then of course we have other things that bother the farm. And one of those is ground squirrels. You guys need to check this out. We've had a lot of ground squirrels coming through, uh, especially on this side of the farm, over here near where we have the pigs as well. But you're gonna see that we've got some ground squirrel burrows that are being torn to shreds by coyotes here in the evenings, which I love seeing. And it may be kind of hard to pick up. I know Lori was kind of filling in some of the holes back there, but the uh, coyotes are doing a pretty good job of uh, getting to some of those ground squirrels. And that's a very good thing. I do not want ground squirrels ever being comfortable here on this farm. Now, I don't mind that they dig around <laughs> as far as uh, the desert is concerned, but here on the farm, no thank you. I'm not interested. So I'm happy to have the coyotes here. They, they howl in the morning and they howl in the evening. It's pretty cool, but what's even better is where they're calling home, which I thought was kind of neat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna climb up here on top of the wood chip pile and show you the coyotes den that we have right here on the farm. But I have two holes that go down into the wood chip pile here. Now where I'm standing is probably about five or six feet off the ground. You can see the wood chip piles behind me here. But I had noticed these holes a month, maybe two months ago. And at first I wasn't sure what they were. And then I started seeing all of the coyote scat, the poop, all around this area. And subsequently we've seen them basically standing up here and uh, coming in and out, especially in the evening and occasionally in the morning. And then of course we hear them and can see them up on top of this pile as they're howling. So it's pretty neat. You know, I know one of the things that a lot of people are concerned with when it comes to coyotes and it's valid is the fact that they are predators. And you know, they're gonna go after goats, sheep, uh, small dogs. You know, they've, they can do some damage. And one of the challenges we have here, we already knew it, would be the fact that we were gonna have predators. And we're trying to find that balance here as we develop the ecosystem here on the farm. And these are an integral part of that. And we're starting to see that while we don't have balance when it comes to that, these are one of those balances. And we also have hawks that we've seen take out some doves, trying to chow down on the seeding or on the pasture. So having these predators here is a vital part of what we're creating. And we're finally starting to see that pay off. So I'm gonna jump off of the wood chip pile. I do need to get a bunch of these spread into and around the fruit trees. So another advantage to wood chips apparently is a great coyote den habitat. So if you guys remember, I believe it was either August, beginning of September, we planted out a couple of our fall beds with some spring crops, getting trying to squeeze in an early fall harvest on some squash. This bed here has some Black Beauty squash in it. And yesterday I was walking through and I think we have one that is ready to go ahead and harvest. So we're gonna take our very first zucchini harvest here in the fall, in the beginning of November here in Arizona. first harvest off of our black beauty squash. Usually wait till that flower dies on the end. Um, you know that at that point it was pollinated. We've seen bees all over these too, which simply means that we have viable seeds inside if we were gonna let them go that far. But Saturday is a cheating meal night for Lori and I, and I'm pretty sure that this zucchini will wind up being fried in oil. 
Maybe not the most healthy thing, but again, it's a cheating meal. And you really can't beat fresh fried zucchini. It is the best. Got some really good footage of the bee activity here early in the morning with one of these Costata Romanescu squashes. You can see this zucchini here. The flower is not completely dead, although it's dying. Um, but you can see that the pollination that was happening on the squash right next to this one. And obviously this one would have been pollinated as well. So I kind of like this one. It has kind of like this ribbed kind of design to it. So it kind of looks like a star when you cut it um, across the squash. So that's kind of neat, as opposed to just the, the kind of smooth edges. Now there's still some horizontal ribbing on these Black Beauties, but not nearly as defined. Got a couple of these guys here that we will definitely be having for dinner tonight. Lori, as usual, was busy on the farm this week. We had our chicken processing last weekend, had our workshop that went, went really well, and we had a lot of chicken for sale. We've sold the majority of it um, already and have some deliveries to make this week. She's actually doing one of those today. But I wanted to share with you guys a couple things that she was working on while she was working on the farm business at the same time. It is Thursday, November 4th, and the last couple of weeks have been pretty busy for us. Um, one of the things that we have neglected and not gotten back to is the garden beds that had the cow peas in it and sweet potatoes that the javelina got into. So you can see we still haven't even cleaned this bed up yet. And the cow peas are dying back, so they are done. So you can see the bed over here that we still have to go through. So I'm gonna cut everything down, get it even back out, get the water lines laid back down, and then we will probably actually wait a couple days before we put wood chips on top of it until we know the javelina aren't gonna come back in here and dig in here. through all three beds and I got all the cow peas cut back. I did pull them all out so that I could um, rake back the rest of the stuff in here and flatten the soil. I didn't want to mix that into the soil so I wanted to get as much as the leaves, branches, wood chips out of there before I did that. Probably adding back the bigger stuff in here, um, maybe cut it down a little bit, lay it down, cover it with wood chips and we plan to keep it watered for the rest of the winter into when we are ready to plant in the spring. When I was in here getting everything cut back, I was pulling the water lines out of here. So we just have these water uh, strips that we have. I do have one that is ripped. Now, I don't know if the javelina did that or if I actually accidentally cut it when I was cutting the cow peas down. Now I get to replace this. I just cut off a new strip of this. I just used the old one to measure how much I actually needed. And over here, all, all I have to do now is just put the new tubing on here. Just push it all the way up. And then this cap actually twists to hold it in place. And then I have the cap for the other end and it's the same thing. So you just put the tube on here all the way and then twist the cap here to lock it and then that's it and all I have to do now is just stretch it out. So we have our new layers in the brooder and they are I think they're four weeks old this week but they've been very like skittish and scared and every time you come over here to the brooder open the doors they all run and pile up on each other 
in the corners. So I've been trying to spend some time with them. They're starting to get a little bit better, but they love cantaloupe. So that's what's getting them excited to see me, I think, when they when I come over here. But we also have a roosting bar in here as well now. And so they're really starting to enjoy that too. So let me see if I can get a shot of them up on their roosting bar and enjoying some cantaloupe. Well, hello. You guys want some cantaloupe? Come here. So these guys are so different from the turkeys. The turkeys by this time were jumping up on our hands, on our arms, climbing on our shoulders. These guys, I've really been trying to work with them just to not freak out when I come in here. Well, hello there. Hi. You climbed up on me. Look at you. You can see she stays pretty busy. One of the things that she was working on was this bed right here, and we were curious as to whether or not the javelina would come digging in it again after she flattened it out. I saw a little bit of digging this morning, but not much. So obviously they were back up in there to see if there was anything to eat, and there wasn't. This first bed here had the sweet potatoes they were chowing down on. The second one, not quite as many, so they didn't tear it apart as much. And I saw just a couple footprints in there today. And this last bed that they basically didn't get anything out of, I see their footprints in there, but I don't see any digging at all. She left the roots in the soil itself, which is what you want to do with those nitrogen fixers. And then she left all of the above ground material that you see on the ground there out so that we can put it back in and then cover these beds with wood chips until spring. Also, you guys saw that Lori was working with the new laying hens. They're finally starting to warm up to us a little bit. I'll tell you, nothing like the turkeys though. The turkeys were all about being with us and jumping up onto us from the first day. These guys are just gonna take a lot more work to get them used to having us around. You know, we've got live stream with you guys tonight. You guys know we love spending that time with you. That is three o'clock, the first Saturday of every month. Hence, we're having it today at three o'clock. Would love it if you guys would join us. Well, I guess next month if you're seeing that today. But you know, this is our weekly vlog. So if this is your first time watching, this is where we give everybody an update on what's going on around the farm. We try to do that every week for you guys. Would love to have you as a subscriber and share the content. If you know anybody that is into this kind of thing, it definitely helps us if you would share that content. Any questions or comments you guys know, leave those down below. We love interacting with you there. And of course, our Amazon shop, that is a free painless way to help support the channel here. If you start with the link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. So it's a beautiful day for farming and I'm gonna be by myself because somebody right here <laughs> is leaving me. Not permanent. Well. <laughs> Temporarily. Just for, yeah, just for a few hours. Okay, so you are going to meet one of your good friends, several good friends, right? Yes, yeah, so there's a few of us that are gonna surprise one of our friends with a 50th birthday brunch. Wait, are, are you supposed to say her age? <laughs> they don't know who it is. <laughs> I guess that's true. Maybe it doesn't count if you don't know who it is. Yeah. Let's just say she's 29 again. Maybe you graduate to 39 at that point. What is it you guys do? I don't know. Neither do I. All right, drive careful. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. Bye. Say bye to Lori. Bye. Bye. Get down. Get down and you can lift it up. Get down. He's like, nope, I want to be up here. Here. Hey, get down. <laughs> here. <laughs> Switch. <laughs> All right, off you go.